What do you want to be called? My mum, Corrie. Okay. <laughs> you know, you don't call me Corrie, are you? How are you? You have to call me mum. <laughs> Why Corrie? A bit weird, but yeah. Yeah, I bet that sounds weird. So inter you could introduce me as my mum, Corrie. Corrie, my mum. Or whatever. <laughs> What? what? You're already being recorded. <laughs> God. Well, that's you the intro, though, isn't it? How are you? Corin, my mum. <laughs> Hello. <are> you? <laughs> Hello. Hello, welcome to Life in Notions. My name's Tim, this is my mum Corin, and today we're going to be uh, showing you how to make Waldorf style peg gnomes. As in peg? Yes, and gnome. <laughs> is this where I say, here's one I made earlier? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Got this lovely felt. Um, what colours are you going to use? Well, I, I already decided I was going to use those two because I thought they looked nice together. Okay, and I'm going to use this green and this nice bright red. Make a nice traditional Christmas meal. I was going to say that's very Christmassy. Yeah. But it's not good. Put the rest of this out of the way. It'll go nicely with your Arctic walk. Yes, won't it? <laughs> so, have we got a we've got a plan? So, you know we've yes. got a plan. What we're doing today is we're sort of using the designs we found on um, wefolkart.com. Um, they have rough designs. I've resized it a bit and reshaped a couple of the things, but that's what we're doing. And we're using these little wooden. They're called peg dolls, but they're not pegs, so it's a bit confusing. I don't know, Chris bought them on the internet from somewhere. I'm sure she'll put a link in the notes, maybe. I will be there. Yeah, okay. Um, so, we've got templates, so mum has some templates. Yeah, here from are the ones I earlier. cut out from a rough piece of paper, and I had to guesstimate because it was before Tim had done the 85% one. He wasn't terribly pleased with me because I did it a bit... Slapdash. Slapdash. So now but it I kind of worked alright. I'm going to cut them out of here. I'm going to wait and borrow your scissors. Hey, no, no, no! I'm dulling the fabric scissors on paper. It's very bad. The first time around, we used those and they're a bit blunt on the felt. Whereas if you have a, a dedicated pair of scissors that you only use for <laughs> material, then they, they cut much better. Because paper blunt scissors. Eventually. Like stone in that paper scissors. Rock paper scissors? Yes. yes. Although paper actually beats rock. Which do you think should be the body and which should be the hat? I think that hat and body? Yes. Okay. We've raided Grand's, not my, not me, <laughs> his Grand's. Yes, we have we have lots of random sewing equipment, all sorts of rug wool cutters and tape measures and masses of needles and pins and everything. There's these funny um, craft pins. Goodness knows how old they are, and they're not really ideal for this because they're too short, but they do work. They are actually really quite new because I bought them to make foam core. Um, board game inserts and you stick it into the foam core and it holds it all together when you stick it together. So it, these are perfect for... For that. For that. Yes. And they'll have to do for this. We do have other pins. I couldn't find any of this. There's a big green But these work perfectly all right. Hold on. What? So, what I'm going to do is just pin this to the... There's a big... This is from Gran, as you can tell. Morning, Morning. Well, li Lily of the Valley. Oh yes! Fine English soap. Now these are, these are these are kind of proper pins and they're really pretty because they've got coloured nobbles on the end. 
and they're longer so they're much better than these fiddly little things so I'm going to put those away and use these you can buy these in nice circle things that's where it sticks all the way around have you finished cutting out yet? no I, I think a hat should have um, a circular base like a, if you cut a cone it should have a circular base so so I'm just trying to work out now how I draw a circle. Would Do we have a sense? compass? Where would it be? Yeah, there's the question. You mean Somewhere. you want a segment of a circle? Yeah, that's what a cone is. See, this is where we're different. Because you want to do things perfectly and I kind of... Somewhere... I shouldn't get on with it. There, that root tree is it. Third one down. There's a compass in here. Oh no, sorry, the one above it. Oh, the top one. The top one. Sorry, yeah. Right. Yeah. So while Tim's perfecting his pattern, I'm cutting out my bit of body. Basically, there are only three parts. There's a body, there's a hat, and there's a cape. My, my piece of cape isn't quite to your liking, is it, either? No. Hmm. What's that? Well, mine's a bit square and the, the other one on there is a bit more rounded. So I made a more rounded one. We'll see what they look like. I don't know. No You're real. making me nervous now. I might trim a bit off mine. <laughs> then I'm just going to trim a bit off. <laughs> oh, this is a very professional compass. I can't just open it. I have to wheel oh, wow. the little thing. That's a ray trim. Wow. It's from my dad's student days yeah, at Delft. Oh, wow. <laughs> you could do really good geometrical patterns with one of those. So what we're going to yes, do is... Yes, absolutely gonna, good. Gonna take that out Right. There. I'm busy pinning my wrong. felt. My pattern onto my felt. Hang on a minute. I don't want that, do I? I want those on there. Is that right? I think that's right. right we'll try that. How are you doing? I'm, I'm cutting out the hat, having drawn a. a, a you sure arc you want to curvy bit? I don't know. I've made my new hat with the rounded bottom, so you should get a straight edge when you curl it round. Ah. Oh. You see? Oh, that is quite like clever. So. Otherwise, you get an edge that goes diagonal like that. And then one like the back is longer than the front, which might be what you're looking for. And I think in the one Mum made earlier on, the back of the hat is sort of longer than the front of the hat, which is quite a nice look, but it's not a true cone. You're right. It isn't a true cone, <laughs> but it kind of worked quite well because yeah, I, okay. I had a bit of overlap to stitch it on the back. Right. Right. Yeah. Are you ready? Are you ready to pin your... No, what am I supposed to be doing now? You're supposed to be deciding which is the body and which is the hat Okay, so we're going to have a the clay. green body. Let me just get rid of this compass. So, a red red body, yes? And yes. green hat and cloak, so... So it's more elf than Father Christmas? Yes. Despite the fact that it's a gnome. So... I don't know what the difference between a gnome and an elf is. I think elves are usually slighter. Slighter? Gnomes are chunkier, sort of stouter. All right, so this is this is character acting. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Definitely gnomes. Cut a rectangle. Well done. Thank you. Remind me, what is that, the body? This is the body of the gnome, so it should wrap around the gnome like this. And you see, because I've cut it badly, one side is higher than the other when it gets to the back. So we'll just quickly trim that a little tiny bit. Right. Well, we raided the Chris's store cupboard. 
and we found these wonderful embroidery threads which are they're made by a firm called o o a what <laughs> oasis it does say oasis and they're a hundred percent pure silk and they're wonderfully shiny but they're quite difficult to sew with but they are lovely colors so i i'm going to take and somebody it must have been your gran did these come from gran as well no, I bought them on the internet. You bought them on the internet? Mm -hmm. Of the silk embroidery thing? Yep, all of them, I think. Well, that's that's incredibly... I've never seen... They're tied, they've got extra bits of cotton tied mm. round the ends. I'm supposed to keep them from getting muddled up. Because it's quite... Did Gran do that as well, then? not I don't know, I just assumed they were from her, so you have to make sure you find the right end to pull. How can you tell? Well that's the problem, you can't really tell. <laughs> I was getting until wrong. you pull it. <laughs> and if you pull the wrong if you pull the right one. It's like she It is. It? Oh I found the right one! <laughs> it's like it pulls out really, really easily. It's like undoing but, a double knot. If yeah. you pull the wrong one it just tightens. Yeah. If you pull the other end, it just kind of pulls it all up and it all clunks together <laughs> which is why this is a this is a grand trick right mm -hmm. you actually transfer the scale onto a piece of card and then it won't get tight it won't get messed up at all oh is that what you were doing that's earlier? what that's what i was doing with the <laughs> <laughs> with the card because it means you can do it and it doesn't get all tangled up because once you've started it it's even more difficult to find the right end mm. so I'm going to put this on the card which won't take too long because they're not huge huge skeins by the time you've done that well, while Tim's <laughs> not finished cutting out his bits <laughs> so I will use this bright red one, which is not one of the silky ones. There aren't very many non-silky ones in there. No, this is probably... But, but they are. I don't know where this came from. Could even be left over from making friendship bracelets when I was a teenager. <laughs> That's, That's not what they I, I might still have one of those in my jewellery <laughs> box. <laughs> That's uh, so sweet. <laughs> that was from when... Oh. Well, you were making them when we went to Greenbelt oh, when you were about, what, 16? Yeah, maybe. Which is a very long time ago. Uh, yes, it is. I'm just trying to say, how did you do this cardboard thing? Are there any bits of cardboard left? Yes, I here's some I prepared earlier. So what do I do with it? Well, I, I, just, I just cut a, a snip. In, I folded it over because we hadn't got any thicker cardboard. Right. And I put this snip is gonna. So that's gonna. Just, be that's just gonna secure the end. What are you for doing? when you finish with it, <laughs> I'll do this out. one as well. Have you taken both bits of cardboard? No, I've just got one. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Right. So I just start from nothing. You just. No. Mm -hmm. You do a oh, snip. I start from a snip you and end with a snip. You, yes. Okay. Well, you can do that, can't you? <laughs> I can snip a piece of cardboard, yeah. <laughs> Diagonally, does it matter which way? No, I don't think so. Yeah, see, I've pulled, this, pulled the wrong end of this. <laughs> right, okay. Okay, so we have... But then how do you know which one's the right end? I should have put this underneath there, shouldn't I? Yes. Yeah, okay. I just tucked mine in the middle. Now it's impossible, because I... <laughs> I don't know which one's the wrong end by end and it's going to well, happen. Which is, hang on, which is the one you did last? This that one. one. So. Yeah. If you just do it like that and stick it inside, I kind of might remember. Do I only need one colour? No, you need two colours. Why? Well, because it's then it contrasts. You use the red on the green yeah. and the green on the red. There is no... Well, it depends whether you want to embellish your... Oh, we're embellishing, body. are we? If you don't want to embellish your body, you don't... Obviously, you don't need to right, okay. have two colours. So, 
I need a colour for embellishing my body. <laughs> um, That's probably a better way of saying it than embellishing. <laughs> if, you if you're doing a decorative design on your body. But I need something that's either the same as that green or quite different to the green. Not just similar to the green, no? You can choose any colour. I, I, I went for some kind of matching okay. things, but obviously you don't have to at all. I've got a knot in this. Well, we're, while Tim's winding his last bit of thread, I'm going to choose my needle. Um, <laughs> we've got this. These are very handy, these things, which have got a variety of needles in them. And because I'm getting old and I can't see, but see as well as I, I've got to choose a big eyed needle so that I've got a hope of getting the thread through. And if you're sewing with felt, you can afford to have a reasonably big sized needle. <laughs> I doubt whether you can see it at all here, but it, it, it's okay. Right. Fine. Now. You should do a series of these. We can t use them to teach our, our to impending daughter how to sew. <laughs> Watch Granny's videos. Here you go. How not to sew. Right, I'm cutting some of this blue because I'm going to use the contrasting colour on okay. my pale blue body. So now this is right. This is six stranded embroidery. Okay. So how thread. long a bit do I need? Well, I've done about that length because. I'm going to sew the back of the body together and I'm also going to do a little pattern on the front and I'm going to hope that's So you're enough. talking about that lot? Well mine's a bit shorter than that but yeah you can do it a bit longer, it doesn't really matter. So about... If I run out I shall have to get some more. And th this is wonderful stuff, you can split it. You can either use it as a, a whole thread to sew but when I did my first one the, it was too thick to do this. Um, and I split it into half, which is three threads each. But I think this time I'm going to split it into two threads. So I'm going to find two. I'm going to hold the four together and two. And you just very slowly let it unwind. Like that. Very slowly. And you oh. just let it hang. And it will and run your fingers down it, and it should oh, I went too quickly. spin oh. itself back together again. It's all, uh, That's it. Right. Oh dear, right. That'll be fine. And then you hold it to hold the end together. This is where it. So, this is what I've got. Well, now you you run your fingers gently through it down it from the top, and it and it twizzles itself round. It doesn't matter if it doesn't twizzle too much at the end, it'll be alright. Um, it's not twizzling at all, right? I'll twizzle it. Yeah, yeah no, just, it'll be fine. Right, okay. And then comes the difficult bit of threading the needle. Um, uh, which, um, needle. Could take a while. So... You've also got this wonderful... I found this bit of beeswax that my gran had. It doesn't look very good, but if you rub the ends of the embroidery thread in the beeswax and just to coat them a little bit then you can stick them together and you get a much nicer end that you can you can thread through the needle I'm trying it just with spit and polish yeah you can do it with spit too but that's <laughs> a little more uncouth <laughs> that's true but you haven't always got beeswax to hand uh, we have, it's always in here. Well, people who are watching this might not always have beeswax to hand. Well, true. We but recommend beeswax, beeswax <laughs> for all your needle threading <laughs> needs. It is very good, it seals it seals the, the thread and makes it slippy. Yeah. Yes. And it's an all natural product. Absolutely, made by bees. Yes. <laughs> right. I'm going to put a knot in my end and I'm going to do it the, the way my gran, my nan taught me which is to do that, wind it round and then rub your finger round and round and it kind of makes a knot. What? Did you not see that? But the, I do it like that and put the wood through there. Yeah but that's not really a, a, a very big knot. No it's not. 
Why does it need to be a very big knot? Well, just to stop it pulling through the through the film. Okay. So I'm checking it goes round. Checking it goes round. Oh, look, mine's a bit uneven too. I'm just going to trim mine up too. <laughs> <laughs> but to be fair, the, the very back of it will be hidden under the cloak, so it doesn't matter that, too much. Yes, but then when you're sewing it, it's a bit... So I'm just no. going to trim mine so it's even. So are we going to glue these you on did. or not? Well, you glued yours, didn't you? But I... I glued it and sewed it. You did. <laughs> I just sewed mine. So the original instructions just say to glue it, I yes. believe. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a bit of glue and then I'm going to sew it as well. Right. Um, I'm just going to sew it. Yeah. I'm just going to glue it up and down. So I'm going to sew it. I'm just, it doesn't need to... I'm hiding my knot underneath, which is why it doesn't matter if it's, it looks untidy or not. And then I'm just going to do some over sewing like that and pull it tight. I hope it's tight enough. So you're doing what? You put this... I started at the bottom. Yeah, we just went through one of the bits. Yes. Like that? Yes. Okay. And I'm holding it as tight as I can. Mine's slightly oh, overlapping. I'm just going to cut this bit off. Quite a lot of dangly thread. I'm going to tuck that up this way. Your glue will probably secure it as well. Yes. So. And then I just started sort of stitching. I'll try not to get glue on your fingers because then it'll go on the outside <laughs> of the felt and then you'll go. Yes. Right. That's what you need trousers for, just rub the glue off your fingers. It's a good job your wife's not here. Don't know what you mean. Um, so, and then we're doing what? I'm just sort of over sewing like that. Over sewing. So, what's over sewing? Well, it's probably not the technical term for it. Just, just sort of hemming it, really, I suppose. And then you pull it. You keep pushing it and pulling it and sewing it till it's tight. Hello, how's it going in here? Okay. Well, we're kind of. Oh, butter. Excuse my French. Well, I forgot to this do is a family emotions. channel. Well, <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, I entirely forgot to do what you said you were going to do. That was the whole point of having the coloured thread. It was. Yeah, and I've glued mine now, so I can't even go back. The glue won't be dry, though, will it? Oh, but it'll be sticky on the. Do you reckon? Right. Mum will now unpick hers and <laughs> see how you do it. What's happened? I forgot to do the embellishments. <laughs> Right. I'm not sure that it's possible to do. You see, what you're supposed to do, what it makes sense to do, <laughs> is when you've still got your piece of felt, body felt like that, this is my piece of paper, is that you work out where the centre is and you sew a pattern on the front. It can be any sort of pattern. I was going to do stars this time, which is just over stitches like that. Or you can do bits of chain stitches like that, which I tried to do a flower there. So anything that you think looks pretty, but on this occasion we're having unembellished bodies. Through incompetence. Through incompetence, <laughs> yes. This doesn't matter because you're not going to see this at all, but what, what a back stitch is, is you do a little running stitch like this. I'm doing it... Back where you started from, okay. Yeah. And if you can do it so that it's hidden, all the better. And then you go in where you started and come out a bit further up. A bit further up? Well, one stitch further up underneath. And that's called a back stitch. And from the front... Have you gone down there? I've gone down there. Well, that's a back stitch. So you're going back and making a stitch there and coming out there. And then you're going to do another back stitch. It's like, on the front, it looks like a double running stitch. Because if you've done a running right, stitch and so then gone back. Come out there, and I'm going in there and coming back out the front there. Yes. And that secures the thread in the material. Okay. Ready? For some. Yes. And then you cut it off. It's important to do a couple of stitches after you come to the end because otherwise, if you just cut it off, the, the stitching unravels. Yeah. 
Okay. So, we have an unembellished body. This is where you take your other contrasting colour. Right, so... No embell... You could embellish the cloak if, you cloak if you really wanted to. So, go on then. How do we embellish the cloak with some stars, given that we failed miserably to embellish this? Ah. So you just see the stars from the back? Yeah. Okay. You could just embellish the hat. No, no. <laughs> okay. Well... How about just one star in the centre of the back of the cloak? Yes, that sounds like a good idea. With... Contrasting... So you're using... Should I use the red then? Yes. Well, that might be a good idea, unless you want a different colour altogether. Nope, we'll stay with just the two colours. So how much do I need to do a star? Well, I'm, I'm going to do... Or do more, because... Gonna... More, because I'm going all the way around... Okay. You don't want it too long, otherwise it'll get tangled up. So mum's done about 60 done, or 70 centimetres. I've done about an arm's length. Or oh, an arm's length, that's the standard way of measuring. Well, I suppose your arm might be longer than mine. <laughs> and I'm going to take two threads off again. Oh, right, yes, of course. It's quite a long thing to be taking threads off. It is. So you've got to do it this mindfully with patience. A weird thing to do. <laughs> if you do it too quickly, it, it tangles itself up. Like that. Oh, like that. I mean, it's tangled itself up. Yes. Oh, ah. So no, 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 no. What? Oh. oh. <laughs> I'll I need to pull that one bit. Yes, that, thank you. Like that. I don't have enough hands. Okay. Right, so the best thing to do actually is just fold your piece of felt over. Yes. And poke it through. And then well, it's you, not in the centre. And you know it's in the centre. Bother. And you don't have to worry about it. Right? I'm just going to go back and yes. come in again. Right. <laughs> I'm can, not going to bother to. Pull it all the way through, yeah? Right, so. Uh, I, not. Where would, how did you do that? What? Like that. Yeah, and then I just poked it through. Okay. Okay. Right. Right. So we're both on the same playing field now. Yeah. And this time, instead of doing those half chain stitches, I'm just going to do like just a one stitch and come back where it came in. Right. And that will be the first strand of the star. Okay. Don't pull it too taut. How many how many points do you want on your star? Oh, five, obviously. Oh. Hey. What? Can't we have six? You can have six if you like. I'm going to do six on my. I didn't come back in exactly where I started. Well, it's not. Is that a problem? As long as it's roughly. Why can't we have a five pointed star? You can have a five pointed star. Is it just. Just like to do six on my. Are you not confident enough about that? Or we could do eight. An eight pointed star? That would be easy because then you do four and then four. That's true. That's a good idea. I'm going to do an eight one. I'm going to try and do five and see whether I can get my angles right, <laughs> which I probably can't. But would you like a protractor? <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> you can be as fancy as you want. You could you could do loads and loads of. You could do like one of those starburst things that you get in. There must be a video game with a starburst in it. <laughs> Right, so I've done eight. Do you want me to do some more, Chris? Yes, please. More? Yeah, I want a starburst. <laughs> okay. Will it be the same colours then? Yes. It's only a one colour starburst. Okay. <laughs> a mono starburst. <laughs> a mono starburst. <laughs> so I'm doing my the next one's a bit. Some people might think it looks a bit like thistle down. Oh, right. Instead of a star. Might they? Yes. That's appropriate given where we live. Because I've done the star burst, I don't know whether I'm going to have enough <laughs> Sorry. thread for, but I'm just going to, ver I'm going to, because we're going to blanket stitch round, so I'm going to take my thread, Tim. Okay, sorry, what? Yes? On the back side. Yeah. So I've got a front and a back. Yeah. Half very lightly through the You say mine's such a better dent. <laughs> 
Yeah, okay. No, I get it. I can see that's the back and that's the front. <laughs> yeah. That's perfect. Okay. Yeah. So you can't see it on the front. I've just I've just caught it. And we're going to one corner, are we? And we're going to one corner. Right, okay. And this is where I hope I've gone to the right corner. Because when you're Is there a specific corner I'm supposed to go to? No, it's when you're doing what? blanket stitch, you have to hook it round. That will do, I think. So which corner am I going to? Does it matter? Well, it, I'm, I'm, I've gone to that corner and I'm going to give you going round that that way. Yeah, but you could go to corner. that corner could you say and go around that way. What doing? Well, you see, whichever corner you go to, it depends whether you're going to sew from... Left to right. You're going to go yeah. clockwise or anti-clockwise. Ah, okay. And it's a long time since I've sewn, so I'm not quite sure what the recommended direction is but you can do blanket stitch from both ways it's just that one is one is a bit easier than the other and to do blanket stitch hold on I'm still going to the corner right I'm at the corner you right. can't see it from the front no okay. you, you, your thread is coming from the back it is let me just get my thread right you put it in from the front in from the and front. I'm doing this about Hmm. Is that two or three millimetres, do you think? Uh, two. I think it's probably two and a half. <laughs> Are rulers in the drawer There's a ruler between right you? there. <laughs> it's not, obviously not critical, but if you do it too close to the edge, yeah. um, I can't read it. <laughs> right. <laughs> if you do it too close to the edge, it kind of pulls the felt and you don't get to see the blanket stitch bit. It, okay, about three. Yeah, about three. I'd right. probably said about an eighth of an inch, but nobody will understand that, will they? All the Americans will. Oh, will they? Yeah. <laughs> yeah they, hey, well. they have no idea what metric means. <laughs> you can say an eighth of an inch. You see, That's I told you I liked true. Oklahoma. <laughs> Lots of them don't know what stuff in metric is. <laughs> right. Yes. You so what? You I've put the needle down. in from the front. Yeah, I've gone you out. Make, ah, stop. Well, don't yeah. stop, but you have to make sure you wind, put that thread. Yeah. The need, yes. Put the needle through that. The the, ne the thread has to go behind the needle. Yeah. So. Ooh. Thread goes behind. Does the needle go through the loop or not? Well, it does because you didn't put it through on the flat thread. What do you mean? So yes, if you put your Yes. Go through the loop. Yes. yes. Pull it yeah. tight. Pull it tight. But not too tight. But in an upward direction. Yes. Okay. Okay. Now, if you hold that. Yeah. You put. Space it about three centimeters in. You push the. <laughs> three centimeters. No, three wow. millimeters. So over an eighth of an inch. Right. About so <laughs> the same distance as it was away from the edge. Yes. Exactly. And look, you make sure. The thread goes underneath the needle. Right. Right. And then you pull your needle. Yeah. Get work out the tension. Don't pull it too tight, so you, so that the thread runs along the edge as well. And then you do the next one, about the same distance. Okay. And you pull it just like that. I'm not sure mine are going to be very even. Well, again. With blanket stitch, you can. Um, oh, sure. Yeah, the have idea, gone. I suppose, is to have. So them if you even. fail, if you fail to go underneath, you go through the loop. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Right. That's the way. And then you just go around. Okay. Cue music. <laughs> <laughs> what we say here. In my case, for quite a long time. I'm going to take it over to the back. As if that was a, a stitch. Right. And I'm going to stitch halfway through the felt so that it, it's invisible. Pull that down like that. So that that still looks like a yeah. stitch. So I'm just trying to get my end out. Pull that back a bit. And then I'm going to do a couple of... I've just about got a couple of back stitches. Not through the material but just halfway through. Okay. 
back stitches stop it pulling out like that check that I haven't gone through and then I can cut it off okay and start a new piece so I've got to the end what yeah. do I do now oh how much thread have you got you might be able to meet, meet it make meet it what you've got to do is put it on here Right. So, okay. You make sure the uh, the, be the best side is out. Oh no! Yes, right. <laughs> Good point. And you kind of wrap it around. Yeah. And then you over sew it together. What it says on the instructions are Very do good. some satin stitches, which basically just several over stitches. Yeah, like to when make you, it look like a like when you're sealing a zip. Yes. Wow, I'm impressed. Tim made us some fantastic cushions with invisible zippers. I did. Yes. Ago. And I had to seal the zips. There you are. Cool. You weren't expecting that, were you? I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> what do I do to seal it off? Well, you just do a couple of invisible back stitches. Oh, a couple of invisible back stitches. <laughs> yes. Of course. Why didn't I think of that? So I, I don't know how to do it. I, all I can do is keep doing this. Okay. Um, well, just tuck it underneath and kind of. So go down. There. You're just trying to stop the thread from unraveling. So I can bring it out here. And then See, I've, if I've I got... flap it up a bit, like this. I've got to start off <laughs> my thread again. Then I can technically do some back stitches through the red, yeah? Just... Yes, if you do them, yes. Yes, you can, because they won't see well, it, because it's the same colour. Because it's the same colour, it's underneath the thing. Yep. I've started my new thread off on here. I'd better race around here, hadn't I? So back stitch I think is just where you go backwards and... Your stitches are much point. nicer, neater and smaller than mine. Well, I ignored your three millimetre thing and did it a bit smaller. <laughs> Tim's had to rescue a number of bees from the house the last couple of weeks. Yeah. I saw you do one this morning. No, yesterday. Yeah, I went and stuck it on the buddlier. I heard you talking to it saying, do you want some buddlier? <laughs> Oh, that's very nice. You're supposed to talk to bees, you're supposed to tell them all your news. Are you? Yes. I didn't tell it all my news, I just... If you have them. a beehive in the garden, you're supposed to go and tell them the news. I don't know. You must know that from Granny Weatherwax. Um, okay. <laughs> from who? Granny Weatherwax in Terry Pratchett. Oh. She used to go and talk to her bees. In fact, she was really clever because she could... She could put her mind into animals mm -hmm. and, and, and she, she used to lay on her bed and because her mind wasn't there, she had a sign saying, I ain't dead, <laughs> while she was flying with the eagles or something, using the eagles' boat. She used to, well, how would you describe it? I can't remember how She took a ride in an, e in an, in an eagle's head, for, so yeah. the eagle was still there, but Granny Weatherwax was alongside being... She'd taken over as pilot, as it were. Mm -hmm. And the best bit, what was really clever, that she didn't really know, she didn't really know she could, would be able to do it, she took over the mind of a, a whole beehive. A swarm of bees. A swarm of bees. But she came back a bit disorientated, didn't she? Yes. I, I'm actually... <laughs> as one would, I suppose, if you were. I'm actually in a Facebook group called We Agent Dead. <laughs> really? Yes. This is... <laughs> All people who are fans of Terry Pratchett. And um, what is it you discuss in this group? Friendly things. Not Terry things. Pratchett things? Sometimes, Terry Pratchett. So, how are we doing? Uh, okay, I'm wondering what to do with the hat now. So, is your hat piece a cone? Um, yes, yours is a cone and mine's a triangle. Right, well I'm going to start from the top, same as we did before with the blanket stitch. I'm 
and just go down the edge, sewing them together. You don't have to do it very tight. Actually, the, I suppose the looser you do it, the less of a ridged hem you'll have. So you think I should cut it so I don't have an overlap? Well, that's what I did. Hmm. <laughs> it's entirely up to you. I'm not sure how you're supposed to sew it with the overlap. That's the problem. No, that was my. That's why I, why I cut it off. <laughs> I, I I put it round my head to see how big it needed to be. Yep. And then I cut it off. And basically it was the same as on the pattern says. The pattern says, it shows you the pattern, the triangle with an overlap. So basically I cut off the overlap. So I just had roughly the triangle, okay. that smaller triangle. And that seemed to work all right. Right. But I don't want to discourage you if you want to <laughs> try doing this somehow. <laughs> try doing that. I took the quick way out. Right, I've come to the bottom of mine. I don't oh, quite I don't know why I've got those, <laughs> those bits there. I'll just trim that off a bit. And now I'm going to blanket stitch all the way around the outside. Okay, I'm not sure what I'm doing. Right, this is more exciting viewing, so if you could just cue the music in. <laughs> la, la, la. <laughs> Come on, Chris, sing for us. Uh, I don't sing, you know that. My grandsons asked me to sing in while we were in the car. <laughs> and I couldn't think of anything to sing. They wanted me to sing what your favourite song was. My favourite song? When you were a child. What was it? Can, do you think? Well, throughout the whole of my childhood, what were my favourite <laughs> My songs? younger childhood. The best I came up with was the bear went over the mountain. <laughs> the bear went over the mountain? Yes. Do you remember that? Not really. It's very simple. I had some tape that I really liked. And I used to get annoyed when Matt sang along to it. I remember that. In the car. You Your dear brother player. Matthew, honestly. <laughs> Was it the playaway song? Playaway. Tape, maybe, Tape. yeah. That had lots of things like. Down in the, the fishies and the. Yes. Um, the word fishies? Chris is looking crazy, looking at me like I'm crazy. Somebody out there will know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm I don't know. Right. Quick Google oh! search. I'm for no, it's all right. I'm not going to swear again. <laughs> Good. I just remembered the okay. embellishment on the hat. Oh, for... <laughs> but I now rem I also remember... For Pete's sake. <laughs> ...that I did the embellishment after I'd sewn it up. Right. Because it's just as easy to do. <laughs> Is it? So you just you secure... Make sure you've secured your blanket stitch at the end. I'm still blanket stitching, but yes, okay. And then I found the front... I've got my hat folded over, look. Shall I wait for you? Uh, no, it's okay. I'm going to be a while. I haven't even gone down the length of it yet. I've got mine going around the bottom. Yeah, very nice. So I've got it at the back. Yeah. I'm just going to gently half through the felt, get the needle to the front. Yeah. So you can't see it from the outside where I want it. Is that it. peculiar to felt, being able to do that? Yes, you, could, you probably couldn't do it with any other material because it would be too thin. You'd have to, you'd have to cut it off and start again. Oh, it, actually, it is easier if you cut it off and start again. I'm just being lazy. Right. Okay. So I've got the my needle back to where I wanted it front. What are you going to be embellishing on your hat? Well, I was going to do another matching stuff. Except. Right. I've changed my mind. Okay. <laughs> when you're being creative, it's a prerogative to change your mind. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'm going to finish this thread off and get a longer thread. Right, mm. so I got to the end. No, I'm going to do another bit. What am I supposed to do now? No, you blanket stitch around the edge. It's quite a big hat for him. <laughs> yeah, actually. <laughs> I did quite a delicate blanket stitch. <laughs> but that's no, 
that's very, very good. I'm <laughs> very impressed with that. That's now, basically just a line. Now blank it stitched around the bottom. Give it a hem. See, I forgot to lick my fingers and my knot didn't work. Or is it just the spit that holds it together? <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't any. Right. You'd be pleased to know I'm cutting the end off of the bottom one. Help! You alright? Yes. <laughs> you just cut your That's finger right, off. That's alright, there's no blood. Wow. <laughs> wow. One should always be very careful when handling <laughs> scissors. Sure you've got an adult present. Yes, don't do this without an adult present. We just this week upgraded our first aid box, so you're okay. Excellent. We actually bought a second one for the car. Oh, isn't that? Don't you have to have one these days? I would have thought so, but Tim didn't have one, so I bought him one. Excellent. Do you have to have a first aid kit in your car. I think so. You certainly do if you go abroad. Really? Oh, interesting. I know. Going, up, well, you have to have like a warning sign and stuff. Yeah. And high vis jackets. Oh, I have that anyway. So. Jackets. Well, got In case vest. you break down so that people can see you. Oh. Just those waistcoaty things that are bright yellow. Well, and sure. fluorescent. Really? People have those? No. <laughs> exactly. I've got we have one. now. Your dad gave me one for Christmas. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> Right, I'm going to start my embellishment while yeah, you finish I'll, I'll off your. You. So, just as I did with the other one, I'm just going to guess where I'm going to do it. Well, no, I'm not going to guess, that's the middle, right? Push it through. It's going to be stuck on his head, so you're not going to see the end. And then I'm just going to do the same as I did last time, which is single stitches into the same. Spot in the centre. Go around. Go around in. Do the first four. And you can do any pattern you like. I put it on his head. This is where, if it's slightly too big, you can secure it at the back, so I'm now going to sew it carefully and invisibly to the back <laughs> kind of by going in the stitches that I did the blanket stitch in That's right. I joined up to that You don't have to do this, you can just glue it on if you want I'm going to use glue as well to glue the front to stop it falling over his eyes you can either leave them expressionless or you can get somebody like Tim to draw their face on. Right, so, see I've, I've sewed that on and I'm going to lose the thread again like I did before. A couple of invisible back stitches. So you better to sew it on at the back first or glue it first? So well, I have chosen to do the sewing first. Again, these are things that you experiment with. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna take his hood off. <laughs> That's a hoodie, I see. Yeah, you can have a hoodie. That's very trendy. And I'm going to take a bit of glue. What kind of glue are you using today? Well, this is in a little white bottle. <laughs> I think it's... And it's fabric glue that dries transparent. It's tacky PVA. Tacky PVA. I actually think that is super PVA. Is it super PVA? Super PVA. Yeah. It's really strong PVA glue. Mm -hmm. So don't get it on your fingers because then you... Oh, it'll still come off your fingers. Oh, it's washable. <laughs> Still PVA. So I'm just putting a bit of glue on the top of his head, not too much, and then I'm going to gently ease the hat over the top so that you don't see the glue. Make sure his 
embellishment is in the centre, <laughs> roughly in the centre. Press it down. <laughs> How are you doing, Tim? Okay, it turns out I can't talk and sew at the same time. <laughs> oh, he's adorable. I think it's a he. There. You can kind of bend his hat over. I suppose you could you could actually tuck his hat if you wanted the tip over, or you can just make it wobble. So I've made two now. You see, yeah, they could be Twinkle Toes and Stardust, but they're a bit female <laughs> name moves, and I, I kind of think they're more. I suppose that could be the, that could be the, that could be Stardust, and that could be, no, that'll have to be Twinkle Toes, and that'll have to be Stardust. I like that. How are you doing, son? It's getting a bit stiff in the centre of my star. You've got lots of stars, that's really nice. Woo! I'm trying. I think it indicates I actually hit the centre every time that time, so yes. got a bit. Wow! I'm trying to see if it needs any more. Is that enough stars? That's so cute. That is really it is a good. one here or is it okay? That's alright. What do you think? No, I'm not sure. I think it might do because if you're here you can only see one star so I think it needs another little one up there. <laughs> Tim's just finishing off his thread, hiding it behind his cape, yeah. which is a very sensible idea. Turn it round so that they can see. I'm so He's just lifted his cape up. And <laughs> you shouldn't be able to see that. Right. Just finishing off the thread. Brilliant. Pull that down. Put that to one side. So you just got a dab of glue. I just got a dab of glue. And it means you can just adjust. I put it on the head rather than the hat, but I suppose it doesn't matter. Oh right. Yeah. Well, I figured it was on the hat. It was. Sit to wherever it I went might to. have put a bit more glue than that. Well, there we go. That's brilliant. That'll do. Well done. I like yours better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> well done, son. <laughs> Thank you. Well, they've got various bits of embellishment. These two decided not to embellish their their body clay body bits. That sounds a bit bad. <laughs> but they have got embellishments on the back of their cloaks and they've got wonderful embellishments on their hats, especially this one. It's got multiple stars on. Looks brilliant. This one has got an embellishment on his body, her body. That was Twinkle Toes, wasn't it? Yeah, Old Blossom. Old Blossom, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you can just see how the mood takes you as to where you go with your embellishments and your colours and your threads. Yes, I think they're looking very good. That glue will take a little while to dry. Won't it? And if we hadn't been talking, we'd have got it done really quickly, wouldn't we? I'm not sure. I've, I'm not sure I would ever get that done very quickly. I'm mum. I'm mum. <laughs> I'm son, I guess. <laughs> No, it's supposed to be like, thank you for watching. Um, life in no shit. No, what? <laughs> you're supposed to remember what you're saying. I should know what I was supposed to say. This is life in nations. Thank you for watching life Are in nations. You sure this isn't Tim's tasty treats? I, I don't think they'll be tasty. <laughs> yes, what is this? Is this Corinne's crafty corner? <laughs> I just don't have to have alliteration. <laughs> Corinne's Crafty graduate. Corner. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is Corinne's Crafty Corner. <laughs> A one off given that Corinne's going back to Devon tomorrow. Okay, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, all the links to the, the website where we got the design from and um, anything else Chris thinks of will be in the description. And how to do better faces. No, this this is perfect and this is hilarious. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>
Then you need a close up of them now they've got like, no face, so that's a bit of a cop out. Yeah, we will absolutely shoot close ups of them, don't we? There you go. Lovely. Thank you. That are, was we, fun. are we done now? Mm hmm. Okay. 